The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome again as we get ready to rumble with uh, the Fed coming out. We're up 32, is that right? Let me update this just to make sure. Up 18, we were up 32. Just a second ago on the S&P, uh, NASDAQ's up 27. Crude oil's up a big five and a half bucks. Uh, gold down about three bucks, so not much happening there. And in the church of what's happening now, of course, we had a little bit of bounce. Uh, not uncommon uh, in these feds to see a little higher, a little lower, a little higher, a little lower. And then maybe about 315 when he's done with his uh, babbling, uh, his uh, prognostications uh, that uh, don't have really any... Uh, any uh, iron to them uh, we will uh, see what the market makes of it but uh, my thoughts are that we've been dreading this half a percent uh, thing and it's kind of like someone it's the difference between someone that sneaks up behind you and pulls the hair and someone that says got a hold of one of your hairs and says in the next five minutes i'm going to pull your hair uh the other the second one is always more painful and I think uh, there's been a lot of psychic pain that he's endured by uh, by uh, talking and talking and endless babbling about the uh, thing. And everybody's going to go, you know what? We're still here. Uh, the trains are still running. The planes are still in the air. Well, maybe it's not as bad as everybody thought. It probably is. But uh, that's just the way the psychology of the market moves. So we'll keep an eye on this, but uh, look for a little bit up, a little bit down. And my guess is by the time we uh, roll around to the end of the day, uh, that uh, probably be a little higher. Anyway, uh, we shall see. But uh, everybody all nervous. And uh, as they say, sell on the trumpets and buy on the cannons. And certainly this is uh, a little bit of a volley going back and forth. 877-927-6648. And you can email me at path at tfnn.com. And uh, what else? Uh, put a message in the den. Was this a uh, cannon shot? Uh, yeah, not so much over the bow, but kind of uh, on the railing. Uh, certainly not one on the, the, uh, on the water line that would have a sink fairly quickly. But uh, eh, there's some uh, shrapnel flying around. If you've ever seen any of the great pirate movies, of course, uh, it wasn't the cannon, the ball that killed so many people. as all the splinters that went around and eventually caused people to die from a lot of other things, mostly infections back in the day. Uh, and that's it. So you wonder exactly just how bad it's going to be. But initial rally, I don't know if you think long, do you think wrong? Um, I think a lot of people decided they were just going to short no matter what, waiting for a bounce. But by the end of the day, I have a feeling they probably uh, are at a draw. Uh, I'd say right now, look for a close over 4,200 unless uh, he decides to drop the chalupa in the uh, punch bowl before the end of the day. But I don't think he is. I think he's probably going to be a little bit benign now that he's got his uh, pound of flesh with his half percent rate. Uh, the, I'm going to drop the Chalupa today instead of uh, the Baby Ruth in the Punch Bowl. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of everything out there for us. But uh, light and variable. Uh, and, of course, uh, volume into the sell-off earlier in the day wasn't bad. Uh, we started the uh, show at uh, 2 o'clock with about 6 billion shares. We had about 7 billion shares yesterday. So volume did decrease. Now we want to see what volume looks like uh, uh, toward the end of the day and which way we actually close. And it'll give us a hint of how really worried uh, people are uh, or are not. Okay, what else do we have going on out here? Uh, did the Fed do a Pearl Harbor? Nah, I think he just kind of strafed the troops a little bit. 
but uh, yeah, he could still come by and drop the big one. But uh, eh, that will end the war. But I don't think there's that much. Uh, let's talk a lot, a little history, and then we'll get into some charts as things move along. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating, and on this day in 1984, Dell Computer Corporation is founded by Michael Dell, running uh, the direct-to-order PC company from his dorm room. Uh, Dell eventually became the largest manufacturer of PCs in the world for many years. But uh, HP and Acer and a lot of the other Taiwanese brands uh, far surpassed them. Today, uh, he left the company, what, in 2004? Came back a couple of years ago, took it private, uh, got a lot of stuff fixed. Uh, now fattening it up for the sale. Uh, he's actually done some stuff to create new products and get out of just moving boxes. But a great deal is about those moving boxes and monitors to corporate America. And uh, he continues on to today. Okay, what else do we have? Well, let's start taking a look at uh, what we have in the markets and look uh, at the reaction or lack thereof of some of the bigger stocks out here. Of course, uh, we had uh, uh, Amazon blow out. Uh, let's see, four days ago, they had 13.6 million shares. And that's a lot for a $2,500 company. A um, couple days ago, 4.7, or excuse me, 7.4, and today about three. So we got about half the volume, and a little, yeah, about half the volume. We had three days ago, and of course, 13 million shares. So this is starting to burn itself out. I don't know if there's a whole lot, but you could get back up to 2,500 uh, just on a dead cat bounce, which is kind of the way I've been describing this whole week. Uh, we'll get into some of those other ones. Uh, if you uh, think that there may be confluence on some of these and where you would want to think about going uh, either selling the bounce or shorting, uh, make sure and email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, the first question of the day uh, comes from Joe, and he wants to take a look at CCJ. Again, more of an issue, I think, with China than anything else. Uh, but uh, you pull back to support. It's actually not so bad, uh, unless you were long up there at 32. Uh, what else do we have here? Let's take a look at this. Um, the downside is you really broke through what you would have probably wanted to have uh, as support. Uh, but you're certainly in um, larger confluence range. Now, when they're this wide, they tend to be muddy. And they tend to consolidate a lot. When they're very thin, they tend to rally right off of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, could you get a handful more days of this thing going sideways uh, before you get a bounce out of it of significance? I think you could. Uh, there's kind of a, a, a gap at about 27.50, I guess, is uh, when this thing does get uh, burnt out here, probably going to go up to that 27.50, 27.66 area, and you'll... Uh, to get an idea if there's any volume or energy back in that. We'll be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right. 
information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. We return. I have a couple of questions. First, one's about options. I'll run them during the uh, 240 break. I want to see what happens here in the 40 minutes after the announcements and see if there's anything. But they, the option market makers have been very bullish up until this point. So maybe they change today. Maybe they don't. Um, from what I saw before, I figure that we close above. Uh, 4,200 on the S&P cash today. So we'll see whether that comes out. I know it's kind of bouncing around now, but uh, it's looked pretty good. Anyway, I'll run those during the uh, the break here in about 20 minutes. We'll see if anything really changed, but we got to give it a little bit of time, see if market makers have decided to, to move the cheese. But they're, they're, they really don't think there's a whole lot lower. Let me put it that way now. Uh, like I said, uh, Putin could drop dead and uh, he could nuke somebody. And those would be fairly big binary outcomes. Um, so I'm more on the option side of the market than throwing a lot of money at equities now. Question about Uber. Uh, Long-term thoughts. Um, I'll give you some short-term one, you had uh, a, a pretty large gap down on the 6th of April. You have your second gap down today. And as I said, I don't touch stocks uh, that have uh, two big gaps because 80% of the time they get a third big gap lower. And it may take a month or two for this thing to get it, but the odds are so uh, stacked against you on this. Uh, but you know they do have a lot of times some symmetry. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and let's say, let's say you got 20 days between that first gap and the second one it's not uncommon to see maybe 15 to 25 days before the next gap and maybe you get a little bit of a bounce out of this thing uh the downside that i would say is that you don't have that big a bounce uh right now confluence sits at 3226 actually that's fairly decent on a percentage basis could it go up there and then fail it's not uncommon with two gaps to get this one filled get a little bit more and then you get the third gap but again you don't know where that gap is coming um and just the propensity for two gaps to end up being three large gaps uh tells me that way so if you wanted to play it I would only play it with options. Uh, the most I think you could hope for out here is about 32 bucks. 
which is still fairly decent uh, move on that. I just don't know if there's a lot of reasons to play it. Uh, certainly give it three days. I don't think that there's any reason before next week to get involved in it. Um, fundamentally, uh, the whole ride-sharing thing is a problem. Uh, it's not a week goes by that you don't read about another company or a country uh, that is changing the rules that which Uber and Lyft work on. Um, I know I've got some friends whose kids uh, did it. Now they just kind of look at it as ways of making money to give uh, to the car payment and buy new tires uh, and really not make that much money. So I think that there's it's kind of had its day in the sun to some extent. And I'd really want to see a very good sign of a low in Uber and Lyft together before I started paying it higher. Yeah, crappy job. <laughs> Drivers have done the math, finally, that uh, they've seen their bank accounts uh, emptied uh, by spending it on, especially on gas now. I don't know, do they get uh, higher rates now? Maybe somebody knows, I didn't even look at it. But I'm wondering at four bucks a gallon or four and a quarter around here, uh, whether it makes even less sense than it made before, but uh, should be. Okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> he bought Uber puts. Well, hats off to you. A tip of the hat, a uh, nod of the head uh, since this guy bought puts. But, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know what puts you bought and when they are at. Uh, I think you're probably talking about three days sideways on this one. So I don't know if there's a great deal more to be had. Uh, but, uh, you know, if the market turns south and sour and dour, uh, certainly could be it. And uh, we shall see. 877-927-6648. Okay. Uh, okay. Microsoft flat on the day, but we'll take a look at it anyway. And see what the usual suspects are saying. Yeah, you're just, uh, you've had your bounce. Um, on a chart basis, you had your low. You had a bounce with decent volume. You were up on the 27th of April with 63 million shares. You're down a little day on 15. There's not a lot of juice here pushing to the downside. We'll see how the end of the day comes. Uh, but you've hit that gap now three or four or five times. Um, yeah, maybe you're ready to go back and retest the high of the 28th, which is what, uh, 289? I wouldn't, you know, that's not a lot, but any of these stocks uh, could move uh, the bigger indices uh, a bit. And as I said, I'm kind of thinking that uh, maybe we go higher here, but fading. I don't know. What has he said? Balance rate, things cut. And he's not even talking yet. So who knows? Maybe he comes out and uh, starts uh, spouting rainbows and unicorns out of some orifice, and everybody loves it. Uh, Apple uh, actually above, but not on volume today. 58 million shares, but everything's fairly light. You did kind of go fill this gap down from the 29th. Uh, you are above the three by three. So that's it. Um, energy was just slightly lower on the way down, but it looks to me like a bigger trading range. Uh, the real problem for Apple on the upside would be getting through probably 72, 73 bucks where that gap resides. Uh, question on my call on UVXY. Uh, we're down 4%, uh, not that far to 13. Uh, are you still looking at that? Yeah. Um, it would only take another day or two. And again, you don't have to go higher. You just don't have to go lower very much. Uh, so I would not be surprised, especially if you see a little bit of a push Toward the end of the day and a rally into Friday's close, I think Friday you could see uh, the UVXY at 13 or 13 and a quarter or something like that. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Uh, okay, got that, got that, got that. Um, okay, got that. Okay, just some house cleaning stuff. Question about Netflix and my discussion about uh, the impending doom of all streamers. Um, 
kind of funny. I don't know if anybody saw it, and I almost tried to clip it. Uh, but there's a uh, fairly famous tweet from Netflix in late uh, 2017 or 2018 uh, where they were talking about sharing your your uh, password. And it said, sharing is caring. How things change. Uh, they're not uh, very happy with anybody sharing anymore. But apparently a lot of, at least everybody says they're doing it. I don't know anybody that's actually told me they want to share a password with me. Maybe they know me. I would say no. Uh, eh, maybe somebody in the den knows lots of people sharing passwords. I don't know. Be well. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. As we return, we've got a caller. It's Jim in Boston. How you doing today? Give me a full report. Okay, so you know, I'm wondering about uh, Western Digital. You always have some interesting fundamental color on these uh, these uh, drive stocks, and uh, and so it, it looks to me like uh, the gap up yesterday was a little bit manufactured, and. Uh, just, just scouting it out for sort of a long-term kind of situation. Uh, let's talk about the fundamental part of selling hard drives. Um, for the most part, if you're talking about spinning hard drives, you have two companies that you can go to. Of your customers, 90% of your business is to cloud services. So you've got five big customers between Western Digital and Seagate. They're all making bigger and bigger drives 
Um, they can't really get that much faster. Uh, they're throwing things like nitrogen and helium in them to actually helium uh, to keep friction down to get them faster and to keep more data and a lot of other stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But you got four customers, and of course, Seagate and Western Digital are always having to fight for that business from Amazon Web Services or Google or the government or whoever's stealing all your data today. Right. Um, now, the money is in high availability uh, server business, which is very, 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 very fast SSDs and very fast spinning drives. So that's where the winners in these are going to make it. But the problem is uh, every year you get more and more uh, of the business going to SSDs, which is really just a memory manufacturing issue, right? Exactly, uh, yeah. I mean, in, when my when I really started to make uh, a a dent with the company I was with, the problem was that they had uh, VCRs for broadcast television stations, but there were a lot of problems with editing. You had to back up the tape. You had to get this to the ballistics absolutely perfect to get the 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 uh, edits together. There's a lot of other issues, a lot of technical issues to to get through, and. The way the most people in technology talk about that is black magic, dark arts, right? There's something that you can't just get a caliper out or a slide rule and figure out. There's something that you only get by time doing it. Um, I compare sure. that with like Qualcomm, uh, which is uh, in the black sure, arts. Of of, like that, yeah. yeah, with RF uh, radio frequencies because they don't. There's nowhere to just go to a book and know exactly how something's going to respond. And so all of their intellectual property for Western Digital or Seagate, either one, is all about spinning hard drives. When it gets to SSDs, it's just a memory manufacturing thing. So it depends on whether you're talking short term or long term. Long term, they're out of business. Long term, eventually, they're going to be the last company that makes a buggy whip. Uh, there is some newer technology um, that's coming out that looks like density would be much better. I don't know about speed, but there's some stuff in that part of it. Um, and, and the question of is... speeding drives, did you say, Dave? <clears throat> what's that? Or density of SSD drives. Uh, density of, of ground-up diamonds, actually. <laughs> oh. Quantum yeah. diamond technology, which is what everybody in Silicon Valley is looking at now, but I don't know about... Um, exactly, you know, when this stuff's going to come out. But apparently everybody, that's sure. where they're throwing their money at the moment. Um, so yeah. you, you really, you know, eventually there's going to be a technology that surplants spinning drives. And when it does, it's probably not going to have a lot of black magic, right? It's probably going to be something that they can crank out at, at scale. And whoever gets to the... Uh, uh, to the cheese first is going to be a big winner for a while on that. Right. Uh, and then eventually everybody's just going to do it. So generally, you know, you get these giant moves off of a change in technology, or as I like to say, a change in magnitude uh, of technology also comes with a change in magnitude of price, an order of magnitude in price. And I'm just wondering when these guys die off. But Right. We haven't seen we haven't seen it quite yet. Um, the problem that I see long term for these guys and why I'm pretty sure they're going to die off is you kind of got all this data. Think of about it as like 10 million people living in downtown and you can't really build a lot faster highways. All you can kind of do is pair them all up together and say everybody goes uh, downtown at eight and comes home at four. Uh, to make uh, the lanes faster and the data come faster on and off the drive. Um, I mean, they continue to be a big thing for saving data, right? But generally, the high availability data, which is where the market and money is, Intel kind of is uh, zoomed in on that, is being able to get something incredibly fast on and off a drive. And a lot of that's SSD stuff. 
and yeah. Intel's still doing very well with that. So I'm just wondering when the end is nigh. Right now, in the short term, you could see 66 bucks. There's a little gap up there. I think that's probably where it's going. It's probably going to pull back to 60, meander, get up to 65. Uh, if I'm right on the broader markets, having a little bit of a rally, maybe into the end of May. And then you're probably going to see them fade off mm -hmm. a little bit more. Though, kind of interestingly enough, for companies that have problems uh, with supply chains, almost all these drives yeah. are made in Malaysia. And even the Seagate and Western Digital things are in the same business park. They really don't have supply chains. Everything they had was down there in Malaysia and really not affected that much. So maybe there was, at least in the last couple of quarters, with supply chain issues on chips and stuff, maybe a little bit of movement to get what you can instead of what you can't with SSDs and faster stuff and chip shortages. But, uh, I mean, they use a few, but it's not it's not the same kind of thing of the chip shortages and the uh, GPU business and video cards and processors and stuff like that. So in the short term, looks kind of good, maybe better just because it's harder to get other stuff that may be better, but you can't get it kind of thing. Long term, they're all out of business. You just don't know when, right? When the reg, rug right, gets broke. Right, but uh, I, it won't happen all at once, but we'll see some kind of technology, I'm pretty sure, to supplant it uh, for long term and large storage um, that's more digital instead of uh, magnetic uh, stuff on a hard drive. Maybe you'll see spinning uh, uh, diamond drive, quantum drives or something. But uh, I think they had like they, a they, little. They don't spin the diamond drive, so do they? I mean, that's a that's a modulation scheme they pick up off the magnetic signature of the disc. So I do not uh, know. If, if I, it's I have, them, I, then it, it's it's already in the state of digital, right? Right, but you could spin them to get to them. You know, I don't know if the the sensor uh, can go anywhere. Do you just put these things all over the place and address them like memory? Or do you have to scan them over the top? I don't know the technology yet. I just know that that's where everybody's throwing their money now. And it'll probably... It's exotic, though, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's probably a year or so away. My question would be is whether or not some of these memory manufacturers come out with a lot of memory over the next year or two. Maybe surplus memory. Can you see Western Digital take it live? Right? Yep. So anyway, All short right, term, well, a little higher, do. long term, watch for the... Rec be back in Super. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Well, I ran the uh, uh, drink that conversation, and they're still thinking that uh, the S and P breaks forty two hundred, and that we have most of what's in. Right now, they're thinking that we get maybe up to forty three hundred on the S and P cash by uh, the twentieth of May for options expiration. So they think we get higher, and then we meander. Higher a break of 4,200 or a close of 4,200, we may just go up and test 4,300 very quickly and then see uh, a bull bear war go on. But uh, at the moment, they're thinking 4,300 uh, for uh, for uh, May 20th. So we shall see. Um, that's not that far away, and 100 points uh, might set up the next leg down. But as I said, I kind of think that uh, we've had the worst in. And what we're kind of probably do is bounce and stumble and uh, be uh, Otis the drunk from Mayberry and Mayberry RFD. I don't know if he was in that. I think he was just in the original Mayberry. Anyway, uh, Otis uh, will wander around and find his way home. But it may be uh, that we have to go all the way into the three-day weekend at the end of May uh, to find the next high that's probably shortable. So, again... Uh, you're in a bear market, but the problem is being and staying bearish uh, for far too long. Um, most of the time, you're going up. It may be a little, but most of the time, uh, you, know, you want to take your money fairly quickly uh, being bearish uh, when the break comes. But uh, generally, you're probably going to see it, and it is going to be some kind of burning bush out here. Okay, got some more emails. Take a look. Uh, okay, good enough on that. Uh, t -t 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 okay, <laughs> by special request. There will be a jump sucking sound. Yeah, Powell. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the end of the world, but certainly market makers and options have been rather bullish up to this point. Uh, they didn't really flinch by whatever happened in the first. Uh, 15 minutes or 30 minutes after uh, the announcement. And, of course, uh, we're over 4,209. Could we just run right now to 4,300? That would be very interesting. Uh, I do not know. I don't think it's that good. My guess is as we get to the end of the day uh, and every day, uh, the bears now are going to try to short everything. And it's just going to be one of these things where you slowly go back up. I've been buying calls all day long in the most hated stock I probably have seen in years in a market uh, that literally doesn't have any more uh, shares to short. Um, and maybe we'll see. But I, I kind of like uh, being out here on a limb uh, with everybody as bearish as you can get, everybody being a little bit worried. And Powell actually... Uh, dropping the baby Ruth in the uh, punch bowl, at least in the short term. Um, that's where you get these rip-your-face-off rallies 
in bear markets. But uh, if we get to 4,300 and there's no volume, uh, you can uh, say that I'll put my bear outfit back on. But uh, I think it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, thoughts from Jill on TLT after the announcement. Um, I was kind of surprised that we really haven't done much out here quite yet. I thought he might be a little bit more sanguine than he was. But I think the market, as I said, at least in the short term, uh, is uh, kind of like your big brother who uh, said he's going to hit you. He's going to hit you. He's going to hit you. And he does that for about 30 minutes. And, of course, uh, it, the hit becomes more painful for every moment you uh, you wait. Then you get hit, and it hurts, probably more than if he surprised you. But then it fades, and you go on. And I think we're kind of in that uh, area where uh, we've all known that we're going to take the hit. Now we've taken it. Uh, question about uh, Micron. Anyway, TLT. Um, looks like you're going to test uh, 116.93 on lighter volume today. Um, again, I'm thinking that you could have a fairly decent bounce. And I don't know where that comes from. Maybe some geopolitical event where the Fed decides that maybe 50%. Uh, 50 percent uh, a uh, half a percent raise uh, in the next thing changes uh, but uh, yeah you could I don't want to be short this thing at the moment uh, you pretty much completed a extended ABC down at the moment so you're probably going to get some bounce 126 ish I think would be the first part where I'd want to be short again uh, the TLT uh, if you had a long-term thing and you've sat on it since uh, 132 or 142, then you can sit on it. But uh, I don't see any reason to be diving in on that grenade today. Uh, what else do we have out here? Um, uh, great call on the recent market moves since Monday. Is fun buying over? Uh, it will be kind of over today. You may have some stragglers in the morning, but that will be kind of it. But, yeah. Uh, you got a little bit of that going for you into the close today. If they haven't put money to work, they've got to put money to work. Um, but uh, at this point, I think there's probably a lot of shorts. And until you get uh, over 209, I think you're going to get three days higher. Uh, the top end of that range would be 4,300, at least from what I'm looking at options. So maybe you get up there and you pull back. But uh, I'd be... You know, as much as everybody wants to be bearish here, I'd be kind of worried about being bearish until we get up there and all the volume falls out. Uh, but uh, that is just I. Okay, uh, yep, still thinking maybe 13s on the UVXY. Uh, answered that earlier. Anything on uh, GDX? Uh, G D X J, right, G D X J. Take a look at that. Um, well, you're back over the three by three. You did that yesterday. You had a retest today on lighter volume. Um, again, I don't know. Gold's just the pit of perpetual despair at the moment. Um, I tried a couple of longs. I didn't lose anything. Thank God I got out when I had a chance, but, uh, now nah, there isn't a whole lot there. And, and, and funny enough, the stock I bought because it was in a good Gartley pattern is right back to where kind of where I sold it. So um, Gartley pattern is kind of holding up in it. But you know what? Uh, it's not a profit. It's just kind of hanging out. Uh, let's take a quick look at Micron uh, as we go through uh, and get ready for the end of the day. Uh, t -t 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 okay. Uh, uh, Okay. I'm just checking the den to see if I have anything else I didn't catch. If you did repost it in the den, I didn't see it. Oh, I do have something up here. Uh, no. <laughs> Everybody always wants to uh, say everything is toast. They're just testing you. Uh, my, uh, Mick, they're just testing you. And like I said earlier in the show, I've been adding all day long uh, once it got to the level. We'll be back after this. We'll look at Micron to wrap up the show uh, and any other emails we get in the uh
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, as we wrap up the show, it's the non-threatening sounds of Chairman Powell. Uh, and I'm calling him Rocket Man, not to be confused with Little Rocket Man from North Carolina, but he's got this market up 72 points. Uh, yeah, 4,300 is game, and <laughs> weirder things have happened, but it could hit 4,300 today, and that would be it. Uh, but uh, I've seen far too many people throw the baby out with the bathwater today uh, on low volume. So I'm sticking with it. I've got a bunch of calls for Friday, and uh, I've added. So uh, not making a lot of money yet, but we'll see. I think this is the kind of action that can make grown men come to their knees if they're still short. Uh, is that it? Did I get everything else? We get in there. We're going to look at Micron here uh, to end the show. Um, as we said, this is when I had a, uh, a fairly good confluence level. Um, yeah, I'm still thinking that uh, the bounce could be to 78 bucks on Micron. Uh, you get a couple of days like this and short covering in these stocks, even if there's not that much. Maybe you only get it for a second, but uh, I'm going to say that there's probably a 75% chance that Micron hits 78 before we head lower. Uh, to, to, well, we're done, so there's nothing left. Um, we looked at options, and yes, they continue to be bullish uh, after the initial, and they're bullish uh, after I ran them there. Again, 4,300 is the high end of this range that we're looking at now. That would be the next real level of resistance if you're thinking about going short. Uh, the market, um, same thing in the spies, really. I'm transferring that from the spies. So, no, 
since Monday. I've been rather bullish. I'm going to continue to be bullish until I see that burning bush that tells me that, uh, you know what, this is a signal. Time to get out. Uh, eject, eject, eject. Uh, bolter, bolter, bolter. No, I don't see anything. I, th I think we have a lot of people that went short today, and they're going to have to uh, they're going to have to cry uncle before the end of the day. Forty three hundred is not out of the question. Uh, I th certainly think we have about a ninety percent chance of hitting that uh, by Friday. If we don't hit it today. Sell when you can and cover with you you can, like today. Uh, we will return like uh, like our same bat channel, same bat time. So we cover. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.